Once a long time ago, there was two lads who lived away up the top of the Strath of Kildonan. We can imagine it was midsummer for this story, and they had been enjoying a Cayley, lots of whiskey and fiddle playing and dancing with the bonnie lassies down in Helmsdale. They had decided at maybe two in the morning it might be time to head up home. So we can imagine them walking slowly, laughing, discussing the joy of the lassie that was prettiest who had kissed them in the cheek, the amount of whiskey they'd managed to drink and still walk, and laughing as they headed off up this stretch of area up here. Now they were starting to feel quite sleepy. All the dancing was catching up with them, all the kissing and all the dancing. So they decided that they would lie down on this grassy knoll in this bank, well a hump in the landscape really, and they would have a rest. So they lay down very quickly. One of the lads fell sound asleep. The other boy couldn't rest. On this grassy knoll, um, all he could hear in his ears was the ringing sound of fiddle music. Now he was a fiddle player himself and his instrument was very precious to him. His instrument was sitting at his feet. So he got up on his feet and he started to walk round this big, huge grassy hill. And then on the other side, he found an opening. He found a souterrine. Now he'd seen a souterrine before, but he stuck his head into the opening. And this time down in the depth, he could clearly hear fiddle music, laughter, dancing. And right down in the very bottom, he could definitely, definitely hear people singing. Now he didn't understand what was going on. And he thought about going back to wake up his friend and tell him, but he thought, oh no, I'll let him rest. I'll only go in for a few minutes. So he crawled away down into the dark depth of the souterrine. Once he got right into the bottom of it, it opened up into a huge magical bright area and dancing and hooking and swirling were handsome men and bonny lassies. The fiddle playing was perfect. There was drums to be had as well. And the prettiest girl of the whole lot came up and took his hand, asked him to dance and very importantly, asked him to stay. And he said he would. She said, you can play your fiddle for us. So he joined in the Cayley. Now the next morning, his friend woke when he started to feel cold. The chill of the wind had started to hit him and it take, taken away the warmth of the Cayley and the whiskey. And his friend was nowhere to be seen, the lad with the fiddle, but he decided his pal must have made his own way home and he couldn't rouse him. So he quickly gathered speed and headed home to his mother and father who would definitely be wondering where he was. It took a couple of days for the news to come down the strath that the young lad, the fiddle player, had never come home. And they hunted and searched and hunted and searched every single area. Not a rock was left unturned, but they couldn't find the boy. And eventually his name got quieter and they mourned him in a way of his passing. And it was a year to the day his friend attended the same Cayley in the village, the same laughter and dancing, but really his heart wasn't in it. And he made his way home at maybe one or two in the morning. He decided he would sit and rest in the grassy knoll the, where the last time he'd seen his friend. And he actually started speaking to his friend in the air. As he lay down, he put his head to the heather and he started to hear fiddle music. First of all, he sat up and shook his head because he thought it was the noise from the Cayley. But then he realized the music was coming from the ground. He walked around the big knoll. Right at the very back was an opening, a big, dark souterrine and he stuck his ear into it and the music was coming from there and he started to shout. He shouted his friend's name down the bottom of the souterrine. Neil! Neil! Come home! Come back! And his friend shouted back. You must shout my name louder so I can follow your voice. Neil! Neil! Come home! Come back! And the next thing he could hear scrabbling down below and he could next thing right in front of his face was the face of his friend and he grabbed his friend's hand and he pulled him out of the muddy depths as fast as he possibly could and hugged the lad and was delighted to see him. Oh man get off me said Neil will you be leaving me alone we only fell asleep just now on the grassy knoll I was just tired with the dancing so he had to sit down and explain to his friend that he had not just had the sleep from the night before. He had been under the ground in the souterrine at a Cayley with the fairies for a year and a day and it was only the shouting of his best friend and the visit to the same grassy knoll that had pulled him back to the land of the living.